Hi boys and girls, guys and gals, uh, it's me, Mr. Craig, Mr. Craig Kinnett, for the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Green Bay. And as I always say, specifically for the Youth Arts Initiative, which we've been doing now for almost five years, um, maybe even a little more longer than five years now that I think about it. Yeah, longer than five years. Mm, that's good. We've been doing a good job. Thumbs up to everybody involved. Now, um, we have been working in my little space, in my little virtual cyber classroom, we've been working on comic illustrations. Specifically, comic illustrations that, um, oh, what, what, what? Oh, I see, I, I see uh, Lenny back there waving at me and he's going, what are you saying, Lenny? Oh, cripes, yeah, you're right, Lenny. I have to do my special show and tell. I almost forgot to do my show and tell today, uh-oh. Um, now, every episode I like to show off something that is kind of cool that I've gotten in my journeys or that I've found in uh, some places in the, the mysterious places that I like to venture to. And this today, I got something that I picked up when I was in Costa Rica. And as you may know, Costa Rica is a rainforest. It's a very uh, dense rainforest and there's always um, almost daily rainfall there. So every day you can kind of get into a storm. But um, there's all kinds of different animals in the rainforest. A lot of monkeys, birds like you cannot believe. Um, but I keep going back to these spiders because I saw a lot of them. And it was pretty interesting when you hold a flashlight up to your head and it reflects straight into the jungle. The little tiny little reflective eyeballs on a little, little spider will reflect back at you. So you can see all these eyeballs of spiders looking back at you from the jungle at night. That's right. We went into the jungle at night and it was kind of creepy. I'm glad I was with a whole group of students or I would have been a little bit afraid. Now, I also picked up this thing that I've been hinting at and it is right here. It is just a tube. If you look here, it's just an empty tube with a little plastic end on the side. And then somebody painted this all fancy. This was painted in Costa Rica by an artist. And um, it's just gorgeous how they went at with little dots. And that's very similar to some of the other cultural uh, styles that they use in the... Um, trying to think if it's called a molo or something like that. Ugh, I should have looked that up before I started the video. But... Then you'll notice that there's this weird kind of door spring, little thin door spring attached to it. And the reason that's attached is because when you shake it, it makes noise. And you can hear the jungle storms at night. Can even make it thunder. So this is something that is so simple. It's like a Pringles tube with a Pringles cap on it, and then you attach a door spring on it, and the, the vibrations from the spring cause this noise to kind of come up through the, uh, the little chamber, and the noise comes out the top, and it, it's ridiculous how loud this is and how much it does sound like a storm in the jungle. Ooh. Now, Mr. Craig, why are you showing us storms in the jungle? That sounds kind of crazy. We're locked in our house right now. We don't want to be thinking about any storms in the jungle. Well, that is... Okay, that's not going to... Maybe it will work up there. What I want to talk to you guys about is as we are starting to get more and more of our comic panels done, I um, actually finished two while I was on a meeting uh, this week, this last week actually, where here's me, here's Mr. Craig doing a meeting on his computer. That's how we have to meet nowadays with the computer. And then here was another, this is a start to a sequence. And this kind of shows me holding up a jar. And at this point, we don't know what's in that jar, but I'll tell you guys, cause it's not a secret from you. It's actually a jar of fancy olives. And it's something that taught me a lesson from my life. That's right, a jar of fancy olives taught Mr. Craig a lesson while he is uh, quarantined in his house. And I'll share that lesson with you in future episodes when we start using this as a sequence. Because now what I want to do with this is I've been doing a lot of single panels that have been telling stories. Like I've actually, guys, I hope you're keeping up with me because I've already got uh, five 
six, seven of them drawn up. Yeah, I've got seven and I've got even one, and I'll show you that later, I'll save that one, um, colored. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is coloring them. But most of them are, this is what I did today, I moved a shelf. This is what I did today, I caught some bugs. This is what I did today, I um, just w had a meeting. So all these different things are talking about one particular lesson or one thing that we did. Whereas this story that I want to do with the fancy olives is going to tell a, maybe a couple pictures used to tell a specific lesson that I learned. And those are things that you can do as well. And please do something, be doing something, be creative, be creating something with this time. Um, or when we get back to, when we get back to the club, you're going to be like, I didn't do anything. All I did was play video games and chased after my brothers and sisters and drove my mom and dad crazy or whatever it is. And you don't have anything to show for your time. Well, you know what? We're given this time in a weird, crazy way, in a scary way. And we, um, we want to use that time productively and positively. We want to stay as focused on positivity as we can. Um, and that's a really good thing for us to use when we're um, dealing with our lives. Sometimes we run into some hiccups and some bad, bad stuff. And in fact, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story because one of my panels that I'm going to do for my story yesterday, um, my, yesterday we had my uncle's funeral. And my uncle was an amazing guy. In fact, he is someone who took me to, he took me to more movies than my own dad did. Uh, I had three cousins, all girls, and three, and two brothers, making us three boys, all boys. And so my uncle John would get us kids all together, six kids, put us all in a car, and take us to the movies. And sometimes he'd do that by himself. I can't imagine a guy taking six kids in a car to the movies and that's before we had to use seat belts that's why we could fit so many in and that's not a lie but um movies are a massively important part of my life and i have my uncle john to thank for that and my aunt irene so they're very very special people but the funeral we had to stay distant everybody uh, we weren't even really supposed to have a big group up there but a lot of people just show up because of their respect for him. But we still tried to keep a six foot distance between everybody. And because he was a veteran, they did something really, really cool for him. And I'm gonna show you a little clip of that. The military send off was amazing. It really, it brought a lot of tears to a lot of people's eyes. Um, it was just a really great tribute to a really great guy. Now, that's a sad story. That's a very sad thing about what's happening right now. And it was even it was even sadder because we couldn't hug our cousins or, or, or come up and really talk close with our relatives and things like that. So that made it really, really extra weird and extra tough and also part of my story for right now. So that's gonna be something that I'll probably add as one of my panels is that my uncle had a funeral and um, it, it was just very, uh, people have been using a word, surreal. Surreal is an art word. Surreal is an art word, gang. It's something that means taking real things and putting them together in a way that doesn't feel real. For example, if you take a man's body who's carrying a wheelbarrow full of stuff and you put a TV for a head, that is a surreal connection where you're taking a real thing, a TV, and a real thing, a man, putting them together and it becomes surreal. So you might have heard people talking about surrealism or that this time that we're living in right now seems so surreal. You might have heard an adult or somebody say that. That's what that means. It's taking some real things. It's got real elements of every day, but gosh, it feels so unreal. And that's what I think people are kind of feeling right now. Now, I, um, that's today's word, surreal. Yeah, yeah, that's today's word. I love to paint in surreal ways. We're gonna start colorizing some of our comic stuff or start thinking about it at least. And one of the ways that you can use to colorize them is on the computer. And some of you guys have done that in the past where we take our line drawings, scan them into the computer, and then go in there and colorize them almost like a coloring book um, using Photoshop. And this, um, this drawing, these drawings here, these are some of the panels that I've already done. And I colorized them when I went to the club last time because I have to go there every week to upload these videos because they're so huge 
because I don't stop talking ever, and they um, they can't be uploaded on these old country hillbilly internet connect connections that I have here in the sticks. Um, I also use um, colored pencils to color some of my um, comic strips, and that's an option that you have too. Or if you're working with pencil, normal graphite pencil, and you have all these rich tones in there, you might not want to color it at all. You might want to leave some of those panels black and white. You also can use watercolors, yeah, watercolors to color some of your comic strips. Here's one that I did um, of me moving the bookshelf, if you remember that drawing from before, and in here I watercolored the whole background before I inked it, before I inked it. Now I could have inked it and then watercolored over the top, but then I have to be super precise, and if I make a mistake while I'm coloring it, I can't fix it. If I do it like this, I can ink my line in a different way, and it looks like I did that on purpose. Yeah, I meant to do that. I'm an artist, I meant to do that. Um, <laughs> when I, it was a mistake, shh, don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody. Um, that's a secret, trade secret. Watercolors come in these little cakes like this, and many of you guys have worked with these at school before. Some of you, hopefully, fingers crossed, will even have a set or two at home. Um, they're not that expensive. I think they're a dollar and a half, or well, maybe maybe now in the world they're maybe three bucks, or maybe even more than that. But this is one option. Another option is that you can buy your watercolors in these little tiny tubes, and these little tubes sometimes cost three or four bucks each. Um, so that means that, wow, these are way more expensive, but supposedly they're better. And I picked these up at a garage sale because nobody, they bought them and then never used them. And I never used them yet either. So I haven't got much experience using watercolor in tubes. Gosh, this one feels so hard. I bet you it, it might not even, oh gosh, I'm going to need a pliers to get some of these open. But I'm not going to use those today because I want to demonstrate to you guys how to watercolor um, using this set right here. So I'm going to take, I've got a little watercolor pad of paper and I'm going to grab a sheet and one thing I want you guys to realize is that watercolor paper ooh, watercolor paper almost sounds like a storm itself. It's pretty thick. Alright, you go back over here and Stop making noise and you fell down since I saw you last. What are you doing? Um, when you're working with watercolor, and I'm going to kind of be fast about this, you want to take some of your water, la 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 la, take some water and apply it to some of your cakes. And I'm going to put some of my watercolor paint into my yellow right away. And there's a specific kind of order that you want to go in when you're working with your colors that will help you. Um, and keep your, keep your paintings a little less muddy. So now I'm kind of going through some of my colors and I'm just putting a drop or two of, of water in them to just moisten up just a tiny bit of, of the cakes. And the very first color you want to start with is yellow. But before I do that, I'm going to be making a sunset picture. I love sunsets. And when I'm driving home this time of the year, um, it's crazy how beautiful, beautiful, beautiful the sky can be. Um, so I'm just going to kind of dampen my paper a little bit with some um, water going through here. So we really shouldn't see anything yet, uh, just other than a little bit of, of um, water or uh, glistening. And some of the some of the watercolor paints will will warp your paper. So. A car driving by. So what you want to do with that is you can tape it down. Now I'm not going to tape it down because this is going to be a quick demonstration and I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with this just yet but now that I've got a little bit of water on my card I can go into my yellow. I'm going to start with the yellow because it's the lightest color and it's the easiest one to get murky if if you use another one. And I'm just going to take some of the oil, the oil. I'm going to take, take some of the watercolor paint, and I'm going to keep it level. And I'm going to go right across, right across my paper, kind of working across. And look at this. I should have taped it down because now it's, now it's like a little mountain. Dang it. Um, and I can also see that I've got a little, little hair in there, and that's not good. 
But I'm going to work my way up. Kind of, again, keeping things level. When you're working with skies or water, you want to think about how things... Get out of there, you little hair. You want to think about how... Um, how to keep things level, on the level. Because if it's tilted, it's going to look and give people a little bit more of a, a weirder feel. Because that's not, it makes us a little uncomfortable when we see things that aren't on the level. And in movie making, they do that on purpose. Sometimes if they want us to be scared, they'll tip the camera. Ah! And it, um, it makes us feel anxious. It makes us feel nervous. And it might be a psychological thing or something that we're not even really aware of. But it's there. Now this is my first layer of color. And now the next color I want to go to is the, is the next one on my warm list um, is orange. And I'm not I'm gonna leave some of the yellow alone. I'm gonna leave it so that nobody's gonna mess with it. And I'm gonna kind of go up into the middle and just kind of pull some orange across. And just kind of blend it through there. This is one of the easiest, fun, the most enjoyable things that I like to do with watercolor is just to make these sunsets because they're so easy and they often turn out just so lovely, so beautiful. And um, and then you can kind of decorate them in whatever way you see fit, which is kind of fun with all different types of landscapes. So it's up to you as to what you want it to look like as far as a landscape. And I can go back in here with some more concentrated pigment and make it darker in some areas. And then maybe even go in here with just some water and bleed this together, blend it together, manipulate those colors a little bit, pull it down. But I'm trying to keep some of it white, some of it yellow, and some of it orange. Now, the next color I'm gonna go to is what? Uh, I'm gonna go in here now with my reds. That's right, red. And you can see how this is kind of just starting to become a sky. And the nice thing about watercolor is that it, it bleeds together. And like I said, it's a wild beast, so you really can't control it too much. You kind of have to find a way where it's like, okay, that's pretty good. I like that enough and done. Otherwise, you're going to get frustrated um, if you try to control it too much. And that's actually the nature of this little beast, is that it should be a little bit, um, a little bit fun and crazy and beautiful in that way. Um, although I do have some friends that can control this stuff pretty darn good. Now, if you want to continue, we can go to um, purples and blues because that's the natural progression of light um, where it goes from the, your yellows to your oranges to your reds to your purples to your blues to your greens to your yellows. It does. It does, goes around, but we don't really see a lot of green in the sky because when you do, that's time to look out. Seeing green in the sky? Uh-uh. That made me nervous. I'm going to go in here with just a little bit of purple because this is starting to get a little bit darker. And sometimes it's starting to look a little murkier too at the top. And just kind of pull some of that across there. And I can go in here and just kind of play with some of these colors without going too crazy because I want to, I want to keep it, I want to keep it subtle so that it's not super harsh. And when your lines lead gently from one to the next. It just makes your skies look look absolutely lovely. And then finally I can actually go to some blue up in the top, but again, I'm not going to put much in there cuz that's really where it's that's where this this night sky is starting to sneak in or or um change things up on us. And good night sky. We don't want to be night yet. We want it to be sunset time. Um and actually, rather than going to green, you could ultimately go to black. Oh, that's pretty dark. Um, I'm going to pull some of my sky down a little bit, just so that I got a little bit more gentle transition from my darks to my lights. And then I'm also going to clean my brush and go to some of my lighter colors and color that downward. And ultimately, when all is said and done, with the fingerprint that I put on there, you can kind of see this beautiful sky that has just kind of went from a yellow to an orange to a red to a purple to a blue, all the way across. Let me uh, let me get rid of that little splotch there, and you can see that. That's the nice thing about watercolor too, is it might be a wild beast, but can also be pretty forgiving if you go back in there with. Um, a little bit of water and a little bit of care and a little bit of gentle strokes. 
Now, this is sort of one of the techniques that I like to use to get people started with watercolors because this teaches you that the, the one color, you ha have to kind of work with your colors in a certain direction so that they don't get murky and they don't build up on each other. And with like the yellows, if all of a sudden I went from blue to yellow, we're gonna get a green and it's gonna and it's gonna make my yellows look not so punchy. And we wanna have we wanna have these beautiful yellows in our sky, because yellow is just this color that as human beings we're just naturally attracted to yellows almost first. I don't know why that is, but it's like if there's a if there's ten pieces of candy out on a shelf, our eyeballs go to the yellow one first. It's just it's a thing that they know about in advertising where if um, there's this bright yellow, boom, our eyes go there. That's kinda cool. I will then take this and with a marker once this dries I can draw some silhouettes in there into the night into the sunset because um, many times when we're looking at um, trees or things like that at this time of night or this time in the morning they get to be a rich black and they're very beautiful and I'll show you some examples of that you can see some of them right here um, and your your sunsets can go from space pictures they could be um, from medieval castles, whatever you'd like to add in your picture is, is okay. And who knows, you could maybe even do one of your house so that it could actually be a, a panel for your comic strip. And I'm, uh, who's going to yell at you? Me? No, I'm not going to yell at you. I'm going to be excited for that. So this is, um, this is another long lesson with Mr. Craig. Hopefully you guys have picked up some tips and things and know now what surrealism is or what the word surreal means a little bit. It's a tricky word, I admit it. But um, thank you guys for watching all these videos and hopefully you guys are getting a chance to make some of these panels. Again, this is my fourth lesson. If you haven't started yet, it's not too late. You can still get some things done. In fact, I would love it if you guys would come, when we get together again, if you guys have, well, Mr. Craig, I didn't get a lot done, but I do have, I do have two panels done. Excellent, excellent. Mr. Craig, I only have one panel done. Okay, that's okay too. Mr. Craig, all I did was write a list of what I, what I did while I was quarantined. Okay, that's all right. Mr. Craig, I didn't do anything. What, come on, come on buddy. Let's get some stuff done, get some stuff done. You guys are talented little artists. You guys are talented little creators, and I want to see you guys utilizing that skill. That's what makes me mad when I see potential and it's not being used. <laughs> so, my name is Mr. Craig, and I represent the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Green Bay, which is an awesome place for us to learn and get together. And I am part of the Youth Arts Initiative. So thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. See you next time.